In this video, we'll be speaking about the ready event in addition to the hide and show events to hide and show content on our web page. Now, from the previous video, we actually downloaded this JavaScript file, which is basically a jQuery library that we would like to link to our web, to our web page. And sitting in the same folder, what we do is we write our script, um, telling it the uh, sorry the name. And what I'm going to do is really this depends on what version you've downloaded last. So I'm going to copy the name and just put it in here. Just make sure that you actually uh, put the exact one that you also have. So you might be looking at this video in, in a year from now. There would be definitely be a later version. All right. So don't forget, this is also from jQuery.com and the version that I'm working with is 3.61 and uh, the development uh, production version uncompressed but it depends on what you want to do so I'll leave that for you to figure out now the second thing that we want to do is to access that jQuery now to do that we start off by a dollar sign and then they select and then select the element or the query that we would like to uh, look into inside the brackets followed by a dot with an action event to be performed. Okay, so it's always just e easily read, but not easily implemented. So let's implement this. Let's implement the above using the ready function. So when the document is ready and fully loaded, so let's start with that. Now I'm gonna have to let um, my browser know that I'm gonna write a script and let's close it. So I won't forget to close it later. And what we wanna do is like we said, we want to access the jQuery library. So we start off with a dollar sign. So let's put in a dollar sign, which is shift four on your keyboard. Let's make this slightly bigger. And then what we want to do is we want to select the element that would like to query. In this case, it's the document. So we're saying when the document, uh, document, so, right. Now, then what we do is we follow that with the action or the event that we'd like to, to be performed. In this case, we, we are saying when the document is ready and it's fully loaded. Okay, so we are going to use the ready uh, event or action. When it's ready, then the next element to operate, one, to operate on is going to be H1. So what we plan to do is this page hasn't really got much in it. But what we want to do is we want to tell the user, um, click here to hide the below list. So we want to sort of hide this list. So when the document is fully loaded, now what we want to do is we want to uh, call a function. We're going to write that. In this case, we, again, we want to access jQuery, and then we want to select the element that would like to query, which in this case would be H1. So let's copy that and put in that in string quotation and close. So this is the element that we want to operate on. Previously, we wanted to operate on the document when it was fully loaded, ready, then do the following. In this case, we want to now operate on H1. So when the user clicks on the heading, now click is going to be the event or the action. Now here is another function and we're going to write that one. In this case, what we want is when the user clicks on H1, we would like the listed items to, for now, let's go with disappear. So again, we start off with a dollar sign indicating that we would like to access some jQuery library. And then in this case, the element we're trying to query goes within brackets, which is our OL, ordered list. And in this case, the event would be to actually hide the, the OL, this element. Okay, so now what we want to do is close off this function. So let's indent properly. Okay, now this is the end of oh sorry that's a semicolon so this is the end of what's happening when the user clicks on h1 
Now we want to end on what happens when the document is or when the page is fully loaded. So that would be the close of the function and closing off that bracket. Okay, we should be all good. Let's save and now let's refresh. Now this font just basically changes and that was also counted as a click. We notice that we've lost or that we've hidden that OL. So I'll try that again and this OL is all hidden. I'll refresh or try that again. All right. Now the next thing that we want to do is give the user the option to show the list again. So let's show that and we want to, like we said, disappear and reappear. So what we want, this is going to change. We don't always want it to hide. What we want to do is first check if, um, if that ordered list is visible, is not hidden, not visible. Okay. If it's not visible, so this is the closing off only two brackets, then hide else. Now I kind of need to indent this further. Then we are going to do the opposite. Instead of hide, we want to show. All right, let's try that one. So now we've got just the title is a little bit different. The heading is a little bit different. So when we click on it, it hides. But when we click again, it shows. So we've got that effect of hide and show, which looks really good. What we can also do is indicate the speed of the hide and show effect. So we can say we want the effect to be slow. So slowly hide and slowly show. It's looking a little bit better. So some sort of a, um, it looks more animated. All right, so I hope this helps you uh, work with the ready function. And we've also used hide and show in addition to click and is to check for a few things to give us that feature where we can hide and show content on our web page. And I'll see you in the coming one.